Hello, my name is Mark Anderson. I'm an applications engineer with Saratech Incorporated, and I handle all of the CAM products. Uh, today, I wanted to do a tips and tricks video on the proper way to start a manufacturing file. And I, I've been to many different companies, and I, I do the, the help desk, and I still see, even with, with uh, seasoned programmers, they don't create the programs the correct way. And there's some things that you absolutely lose by not creating the files correctly. So let's go through this PowerPoint quickly. These videos are very short, so I want to make sure that I get the information in. As I said, my name is Mark Anderson, and I'm a senior applications engineer with Saratech. Our goal is to help you get the most out of your software and to share the knowledge and to build a community for you to be able to find information. So today it's the correct procedure to create a manufacturing file. And the, the detailed points are the important importance of creating the manufacturing file the correct way. I'm going to show you what is lost if this method is not used. And then I'm going to show you a demo of the incorrect methods and results, and then a demo of the correct method and results. So with that, let's go into a demo. Here I have NX opened, doing a dual channel, 9-axis dual channel Milturn program. So I'm just going to go ahead and open a sample file and what we're going to be opening is a insert that goes into a mold base so with this mold base this is the correct way that the correct way to open up these files so right now i've just opened it up it's in gateway it can also open up in main, uh, modeling whatever is the, the last application to be used now, I see a lot of times in the field that customers go directly application to manufacturing. Even though this machining environment comes up and you choose a general session configuration and a different setup to create, when you hit OK to this, if you look in your assembly navigator, all you have is one part as your top level. This is not an assembly file. So what you lose by doing this is if we try to do a wave geometry link, I have no ability to do a, a geometry link to this part. So I immediately lose the ability to create associative copies. I lose the ability to do synchronous editing to create stage models. And it, when I go to add parts, this is a single file and each part will just be a component within this single part file. So even though there might be multiple parts, it's going to look at every single piece of this file as one part. Even though there's multiple parts or different bodies in the part navigator, it sees them as one part. It is not an, a, um, an assembly file. And it's critical with manufacturing files for it to be an assembly file. So that's the main thing that you lose is the ability to do synchronous edits to make stage models and to use the wave geometry linker to create associative copies. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now I'm going to open this back up. And this is the correct way. This should always be followed every single time with no deviation. You go file, new. You open the file up first. And then you go file, new. And then you choose a manufacturing tab. And then you choose a setup, an existing uh, template. Now, this is the same as the dialogues that you saw, except this is inside of the file new dialog. You see our part name is this, the same name, but it has a, a distinguishing mark, setup, underscore, and a number. This would be the, it, this is always in sequence, so there already is a setup underscore one, which is the first manufacturing file. And you can look at these as my first operation, second operation, third operation, and so on. The folder that it's going to be saved to and then you see part to reference here is the, the insert part. It's the original part. Up here in relationship, I have reference existing part. So it's going to default to the unit of measurement that the part is, is was created with. Now, by doing this, when I hit OK, it's opening up an assembly file. Now, if you look at your assembly navigator, I have an assembly file. And my my part is a component of this assembly file. Now what that does is it allows me to do wave geometry linking. And now I've created an associative copy. 
in my part navigator. And now what I can do is I can do any type of synchronous editing. This is important for doing any type of uh, surface machining. You, you must be able to create, create these so that you can have the best surface ability to do that, a sur surface integrity to be able to do that surface machining. So you would defeature the part to get the best surfaces capable. But the most important part is this is an associative copy. So if the designer changes this part, I'll go ahead and open this original file again. It's going to ask me reopen. So now that I've reopened this, if I go into modeling and say I do something like um, move a face or do any type of synchronous editing, or if the design original designer uh, changes a hole's location, something of that effect, as soon as that is done and this part is saved, I go into the original the manufacturing file that I have. Not only is the linked body, the associative copy, ha has the edits, but if I hide this and open back up my original part, it also has that edit. So it's an instantaneous and immediate. That's very important for the revisions and keeping track of or keeping your file updated during revisions. So as soon as that designer makes a, a revision, if it's an um, Unsecured document change, meaning that they just changed the file, it automatically updates your file, your operations will go out of date, and then you'll have to uh, regenerate them. And 90% of the time, they'll hold the associativity, so it's just to regenerate. If not, then you'll have to reassociate the operation with the geometry you want to machine. If it is a controlled document change, then you just go in, replace component, pick the revision, the revised component, and then select it, hit a, a OK or apply. The new part comes in, the old part is exchanged, your operations go out of date. But again, if they're within certain limitations, if uh, the whole location just changed slightly or if the surface changed slightly, it holds the associativity and you just have to regenerate the part. So this is the most important part of starting a manufacturing file. If you find yourself using an older method of going and opening the file and going directly application manufacturing, you need to really stop doing that because you're limiting yourself to 75% of the of NX's functionality. You immediately lose 25% of NX's functionality that makes programming much easier for you by doing that method. By doing the, the opening the file, it being in gateway or modeling, and then going file new, manufacturing tab, choosing a uh, template, and making sure that it's referencing the existing part. Once you hit OK, an assembly file is created. Your part becomes a component of that. And then each other part, whether that be fixtures, bolts, hardware, anything like that, becomes a component of this assembly. And you have 100% of the functionality of an X. So this is very important. So I urge you to try the different methods if you find yourself doing it any other way. I had some companies that what they would do is they, they would just go immediately and create an assembly file and then add the components in the assemblies tab using the add component function. That you can do that and that will be, it will create the association and you'll have 100% of the functionality except there's 15 more button clicks by using that method compared to file new manufacturing tab, choosing a, a template and then starting it that way. So I implore you to try the different methods and stick with the file new methodology. That's the best practices of NX, and that's what they recommend that you do to, to get the best functionality and the ease of programming out of NX. So I hope that has um, cleared some things up for you. So I thank you for attending, and here are some links that will be in the um, YouTube video that can help you get information. And um, if you have any questions about this, you can always contact Saratech and uh, talk to me directly and I can explain things to you a little better in detail if you need. But this is the most important thing going for with NX creating manufacturing files is choosing the file new manufacturing tab, 
template and making sure reference existing part is selected and then creating the assembly file and your component as your part as a component of that assembly file. So thank you very much and have a great day.